everyone and welcome again to my zone online school today we're going to have an awesome time my name is esther kamati and i'll be taking you through the great lessons that we have planned for you today so we're going to start off with a great one but before we get into that i hope everybody is calm and relaxed because that is our theme for this week so let's remain calm as we keep our hands clean and we social distance so today's lesson grade ones i hope you are ready because we're going to learn about addition and we're going to color with teacher Janice. So let's head over to her class. Explanation of symbols on worksheets are as follows. Use coloring crayons to color the picture. Use your finger to follow the track or line or show the correct picture. Use a coloring crayon to draw a line or write a number or sound. Look at the picture and say the number or sound out loud. Use a scissors to cut on the dotted line. Look at the picture. Use these symbols for the lesson of the day, which will be allocated at the top right side of each page. For example, lesson one, prepositions and directions. boys and girls welcome to my zone online school my name is Janice Abrams and welcome my friend the theme for today is houses but before we continue with the lesson let's first practice our social distancing and sanitizing of hands between the fingers. Good. Lesson five. Addition, sequencing, word search, problem solving and coloring. Let's go over to page 24. How many pets? Meg has three cats. Tom has three dogs. How many pets are there in all? Draw a picture of the pets. Now learners, as you can see on that page, there is one big square there. It's an empty square. Can you see it? So in that big empty square, you have to draw three cats and you draw three dogs. I'm going to repeat myself again. On that page, there is a big empty square. You have to draw the following. Three cats and three dogs. After you have done drawing the pets, now can you see that small little square there at the bottom? Do you see it? Good. In that square, you must write the amount of how many cats and how many dogs there are. So you say 3 plus 3 equals 2. Okay, and that amount you must write in that small square there underneath. Good, let's continue. 
At the bottom of the big square, you will see that there is a number line. Do you see the number line from 0 up to 10? Yes. Now let's continue. Under the number line, there is two boxes or two squares. What must you do in that boxes? Let's quickly have a look. Write the equation in the first square or in the first block. What is an equation? That means, equation means you have to write two numbers or values and then you must add it up. So in that first bo box, can you see there's a line plus a line equals a line? So what must you do? You must write in, remember in the big box you wrote or you drew or draw three cats and you also drawn three dogs. So what must you write now in that small box there? They, like they said, write the equation. On the first line, how many cats are there? Three cats. So you must write on the line the number three. Plus, how many dogs do you see in the big square or in the big box? Three dogs, so write in the number on that line, three. So three plus three equals, write in the correct answer on top of the lines. Let's go to the next box or to the next square. Write the answer. Now the answer that you have written in the first small box there under, that amount or that answer you must now fill in in the next box. Boys and girls, I hope that you understand. Let's continue with the next page. Page 25. Sequencing. What is sequencing? Sequencing is numbers or things that is placed from the biggest to the smallest or from the smallest to the biggest. So let's see. Cut and paste the pictures in order. So what must you do? We must cut the Apples. The apples are in boxes or in blocks. We must cut out the apples and then we must paste that apples at the back of the numbers. The numbers are one, two and three. As we can see, the sequence of the numbers is from the smallest to the biggest number. What is the smallest number? One. What is the biggest number? Three. So now we have to do the same with the apples. We have to cut out the apples and paste it at the back in the correct sequence. Paste it at the back of the numbers. So we have an apple that is Already, it's like, it's already eaten. Then the second apple is still a whole apple. And then the third apple, there's only like one bite in that apple. So when we sequence the, this apple, how will we do it? When we take the apple out of the fridge, how will it look like? Will it be a whole apple or will it be an apple that is finished? finished? It will be a whole apple when we take it out of the fridge. 
So the whole apple you will paste at the back of number one. The second apple, which is bitten only once, you will paste that second apple at the back of number two. And the apple that is finished, that apple you will paste at the back of number three. So after doing this, you have sequenced your apple from a whole apple to an apple that is finished. Let's go over to page 27. 27, it says word search. Word search means you have to look, you have to search for a specific word in that blocks that they give them. Can you find these words? Now let's look at that small little blocks under there. We have to find the following words in that blocks there on top. The first word is window, roof, door, wall, kitchen, bedroom, room, floor, house, and the last word, cat. Now that words, you must search. You must search for that words there on top. Do you understand boys and girls? Good. Around the house, cut and paste the objects in the correct room in the house. Now, do you see the house there? Do you see the house? Yes. Do you see the furniture next to the house? Yes. So we must cut out the furniture and then we must cut the fur then we must paste the furniture where it belongs in the house. So let's look at the first part, the bedroom. The bedroom. Will we paste the sofa in the bedroom? No. Will we paste the toilet in the bedroom? No. Will we paste the bed in the bedroom? Yes. So we will paste the bed where the bedroom is. And that is what you have to do on that part. Let's go over to the next page. Page 29. Problem solving. We have to solve a problem. Write the number sentence and solve the problem. We have to write the values and the answers. Or we have to write the numbers and the answers. So we have to solve the problems. There are six blocks of pictures. Let's go to the first block. What do you see there? I see a girl and a boy. Now let's read there on top. Four girls sat at their desks. Three boys sat at their desks. How many children? Now you will see there's a line, there's a plus, there's a line, there's an equal sign, and there's a line again. So you must write the numbers that they give you. You must write the numbers on the lines below. On the first line, there are four girls. So what must you write on the first line? Number four. What must you write 
after the plus sign, there are three boys that sat at the desks. So what must you write on that line? Number three. Then you get the equal sign. So four plus three equals two. How much is the answer? What is the answer? The answer is seven. So you will write the answer on the line. Let's look at the pencils. There are six pencils. Add two. How many pencils? Now, on the first line, we will write. How many pencils are there? Six. So on the first line, we will write the number six. After the plus sign, we added two pencils. So what is the number that you must write on that line? Number two. So six plus two is equals to eight. So my answer will be eight. So you have to do the apple, the ruler, the two apples and the starfish. See if you will be able to solve that problems. Good. Let's go over to our next page. Page 30. Color the house. Remember, we are busy with the theme house or houses. So what must you do on this page 30? You have to color the whole picture. Very, very good. And you must color it in colorful and in one direction and neatly. That is what you have to do on page 30. We come to the end of our lesson. But before we call on Zashi, what must we remember, boys and girls? Social distancing. Sanitizing of our hands and between the fingers. And now we call on our friend Zashi. Where are you? Bye. Hi everyone. Uh, you can't hug your friends anymore, but you can still give yourself some love. Or you can practice how to blow hugs. Mwah, 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 mwah. And until next time, bye! That was so much fun coloring with teacher Janice. I hope you guys had as much fun as I did, but grade ones, don't forget to put away your coloring pencils. So now we're moving over to grade two and three, and I hope grade two and three, you better have your pens and pencils ready because teacher Guriras is going to show us how to complete a crossword puzzle. So let's see how it goes. Hello there again. Welcome to my Zone Online School. My name is Ms. Isolda Guriras and I have a friend here with me. This week's theme is occupations. As you can see, I'm all dressed up as a doctor and Leandra here as a hunter. Before we can start with our theme, 
Let us quickly sanitize our hands. Two sprays. Between the fingers. Thoroughly around your thumbs as well. And always remember to keep social distancing. During this lesson, we will do diagraphs, reading comprehension, crossword puzzle, as well as the side words. All right, I would like for us to turn to page 25, grade two level, diagraphs. Let us read the instruction. Read and find the words with the sounds indicated below within the reading comprehension about Estelle's trip to the grocery store on page 26. Write it under the correct sound. For example, the br sound is for bread. So we have to find all the sounds in the reading comprehension on the following page. But before we can actually start with the comprehension, let us quickly look at our practice reading of the diagrams listed below. First, you have to practice for me the consonant diagrams as well as the vowel diagrams. Read the words and every time try to spell and write the words. Let us turn to page 26 to read the comprehension so that we can find the words to our sounds to complete the columns. On to page 26, reading comprehension. Read the following text and circle the correct answer. Estelle trip to the grocery store. Estelle and her mom are going to the grocery store. They need to buy milk, bread, eggs, bananas, grapes, and peanut butter. While at the store, Estelle's mom also decided to buy some jelly. Estelle pushes the cart while her mom puts the groceries in the cart. When it's time to check out, Estelle helps her mom unload all the items onto the counter. They are a great Team. Now, if we have to go back to the previous page, page 25, there on top, I would like for you to find the words that has the, the, the sound and complete by filling in at the spaces provided. And you can do the rest as well with the other sounds. You find the words with those sounds. Turn back to page 26. Let us quickly look at the questions. Questions number one. What type of fruit does Estelle and her mom buy at the store? So there are one, two, three, four, five, six options to choose from. So you only have to choose the correct uh, uh, sorry, answer by encircling the correct letter. Number two. Three and five, four and five, you have to do it on your own. Now I would like for us to turn to page 27, also the reading comprehension, grade three level. Now this is about Mrs. Kuriras, who is a good teacher. And after reading the passage, we are going to look at the questions below and then we have to answer them as well. Let us read. She is a primary school teacher. She loves English. At home, she has got a husband and three children. She has no time for any pets. She usually gets up at 7.30 and she drives to school. When she arrives at school, she gets her classroom ready for her pupils. She usually wears her skirt and a jumper for school. She likes to wear pearl, pearl earrings at all times. They are a gift from her husband. In the evenings, Mrs. Kuriras has a lot of jobs to do. 
She makes the dinner, clears away, stocks the dishwasher and sometimes she hovers. Later on, she makes sure her children have a bath and she reads them a bedtime story. Then she relaxes a bit. Her husband does the washing and ironing. On Friday nights, she goes out for a meal with her husband. They usually go to a French or Italian restaurant. On Sundays, they take the children out somewhere, maybe to the park or to the zoo. Mrs. Kuriras is very happy with her life. She doesn't want to change anything. She is a nice and a very happy teacher. Okay, let's look at the questions below. What is Mrs. Gurira's job? What do you think she does? Yes, she is a teacher. Very good. Now I would like for you to complete two, three, five, four, five, six, seven, and eight on your own. Remember, if you don't understand the questions, always go back to the passage and read over again. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> I hope you have enjoyed your reading comprehension. I would like for you to turn to page 28, whereby we are going to play a little bit of game by doing crossword puzzle. Um, read the clues below to complete the crossword. Okay, let's quickly look at a cross first. Number four. Let's find number four. A cross means when you are going from left to right. Who fights crime? And we have to fall into a word that fits with 13 letters. Okay, I will give you the answer for that. It is the police officer. Police officer. P-O-L-I-C-E-O-F-F-I-C-E-R. Police officer. And how about number five? Who studies at school? We can say students. No? Student studies at school. So you can put in students at number five that goes also across. All right. Let's look at number, the below one, for down. Number one says for the down words, the words that are going from top to bottom. That's what down means. Who sings songs? Who sings songs? It is a singer. All right. You fall in. And then we have number two. That is quite a long one. Who fights fire? Who do you think fight, uh, fights, fights fire? Pardon me. It is a firefighter. Firefighter. Okay, so I've given you a hint. So I would like for you to complete the rest of the words for falling in on your own. I would like for you to turn to page 29. Now this is just also to play around with the side words, the words that mostly appears frequently when we are reading a text, all right? But then I have a word for you in the word box there below the side words. The ones that you have to choose from. The words, let us quickly read the words. Do, can, have, little, am, you, and my. So let's quickly look at the first sentence there. I Da, 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 six years old. So which side word do you think will fit there? And the hint has been given to you there. The word only has two letters. But the do word also has two letters. So let's try the first one. 
I do six years old. Uh-oh. Does it make sense? No. Let's try the next one. M. I am six years old. That is correct. So you fill in the word M. I am six years old. So you continue the activity by filling in the correct side words in the spaces provided for you. Thank you. Alright, now that we have completed our parcel in side words, I would like for us to turn to page 30. And I hope you guys like to sing because there's a song that we are going to sing today. Before we can start with the song, we have to read it first. It's about the firefighter. The song's name is Firefighter. I am a firefighter on the go. Here is my helmet. Here is my hose. When I see a fire, hear me shout. I turn the water on and put it out. All right? First of all, I will sing and then you can sing with me. <clears throat> I am a firefighter on the go. Here is my helmet, here is my hose. When I see a fire, hear me shout. I turn the water on, put it out. Can we try it? Okay, it's a very lovely song. Let us try again. I am a firefighter on the go. Here is my helmet, here is my hose. When I see a fire, hear me sing. I turn the water on and put it out. I am a firefighter on the go. Here is my helmet, here is my hose. When I see a fire, hear me shout. I turn the water on and put it out. All right, that was a lovely song indeed. Now we have come to the end of our lesson. But before we can say goodbye, always make sure to sanitize your hands. Keep a social distance. And remember, whenever you need to leave the house, put on your mask at all times. Let us welcome our friend and we say goodbye until next time. Bye-bye. Hi, everyone. Uh, you can't hug your friends anymore, but you can still give yourself some love. Or you can practice how to blow hugs. Mwah, 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 mwah. And until next time, bye. That was so awesome, teacher Gorilla. So now we know how to fill in our crossword puzzles and how to work with diagrams. So now we're moving on to our grade sevens. So grade sevens, I hope you're ready because teacher Dumi is going to teach us science and it's all about estimating and measuring. In my estimation, this is going to be a fun lesson. So let's check it out. Welcome to My Zone Online School. My name is Mr. Litwai Dumi and welcome to the Arise. Um, today, before we start with our lesson, let us remember to sanitize our hands. Make sure all the parts of your hands are sanitized. 
We also need to remember about keeping the social distance by stretching out. Today's lesson is on estimation and measuring. Okay, let us go to page 22 on our booklet where we have to start uh, the work of today, estimating and measuring. So the competencies there is to estimate and measure, whereby we are measuring the length, mass, time, and temperature. We also need to know the temperature of the melting ice. Words we need to know before we start, we need to know what is an estimate. An estimate is making a smart guess, judgment, or prediction. The answer should be near the actual answer. Measure to find the size or the amount or the degree of something using the instrument, and this should be the actual answer you are getting, evaluation, assessing something in a numeric way or descriptive, and then you also have to compare your estimate to your actual answer. With the table, Length, mass, time, and temperature. We we'll do this um, practical activity or explanation by doing one at a time. So we'll start with uh, length. There, it's um, to read through length. This, the definition of length is the distance between two points. You are given an example of point A and B, and the line in between is indicating the distance between those two points. If you are to estimate length, you have to give a better guess or a prediction in such a way that it must make sense. We are having line PQ. In that line, if one have to guess it right, I would say that is um, five centimeter. And to record it, it's already done for you. And if you look at there, the answer five centimeter, you can see that this an equal sign which is not looking like an equal sign. It is called approximation. So an estimate, you must not use the sign of equal. You must use approximation, which is exactly that sign which is there before five centimeter. How to measure? length and the instruments that you have to make use of. You can measure that line PQ. The line is there under estimation. And after we measured this, we find out that the length was 4.5 centimeter. And that is the actual answer. The instrument used, you can use a ruler, a meter stick, measuring tape, measuring wheel, the odometer. But some of these instruments are used depending on the length that you are measuring. For example, if you are to measure a soccer field, the length, you cannot use a meter stick because it's short. So you can use a measuring wheel or measuring tape. 
The odometers are found in cars, so you also need to know that. How to evaluate this? You can take an estimate minus your measure, or you can take your measure minus your estimate. You have to make use of the, the bigger number. And by doing that, I think there is um, a slight mistake there. What you have to do is to subtract 5 minus 4.5. Then you can get your answer as 0 0.5. There it's given as 1.5. It's also fine. If you look at the scale from 1 up to 5, you are going to rate yourself and see either you were your estimation was better or poor. The gap between your estimate and measure should determine whether you have made a right estimation or a wrong one. In the comment, the comment should be answering the question, how is your estimate compared to your measure? If the estimate is good, it means your estimate should be so close to the actual answer. Now we have to do it in a practical way, length. So we use an example that we are going to measure um, here. So allow me to move to the chalkboard so that I can explain length. We will have um, to measure the length of a pen. So for us to measure this length of a pen, we need to know which instrument we can use. We said instruments which are here with us today, we have a measuring tape. This is um, a five meter measuring tape. It can only measure the, the length of within five meter. We also, you can just take one ruler there. It can measure um, any length between um, 0 and 30 centimeter. So it depends what object you are measuring. So in this case, we use a ruler to measure the length of this pen. You can just have it. Can just have it. So first we have an estimate. Estimate we have measure and then we evaluate. So this will be the pen which is length. You can do this also at home. So we are going to do it on the table. You can just place the pen on the table. I want you to place the ruler straight starting with it. It must start at zero where the line, the marking line starts. And then you have to shift it a little bit. Okay, straight. And we can say that this is exactly 14.5 centimeter. So this is 14.5 um, centimeter. And I've given the measurements but I didn't give the estimate. And if I ask Elena or a student to give me the estimate while the person already know the measure, then this experiment won't be that effective because first we must give our estimate and then you have to measure. It's just for one to understand it much better. 
So we are going to use a different pen and do it proper. So we will use this pen here. Yeah. You can just start measuring it. You can just start measuring it. But this question comes back to me. What could be the estimate of that pen? I will give it without measuring. I will say maybe that pen is um, maybe 17 centimeter. And then going back to the measurement, I will see that is exactly how you have done it proper. I will say it's 14, this is 14, 14.6. So this is 14.6 centimeter. And this is the actual answer. So to find, to evaluate my estimation to see if I have done it proper, I can take the highest number, which is 17 centimeter minus 14.6 centimeter. Of course, we can do this as 17.0. And we say 14.6. And we have to subtract. We are now at mathematics. So we have 16. We have 10 here. So we'll be having uh, 10 minus 4 is, um, 10 minus 6 is 4. Um, take away. Four from six, you have two. This is zero. Centimeter, centimeter, centimeter. So I can see that my difference, the difference I have is 2.4 centimeter. And on the scale, which is from zero to five, two, Five, four, three, two, one, and zero. On the scale, this is uh, poor and this is uh, excellent. So on the scale, I can see that I was not that so close to 14.6 because I went a little bit higher. So if I have to rate myself, I will say, I will maybe be at three. I'll be at three because the work, if I was, if my estimation was 15, which is so close to 14.4, then I'll say that is an excellent uh, guess. But since it's, the gap is 2.4 in this way, way far, I will say the estimation was good but not excellent so the comment so the comment i will say my estimation estimation was good but not excellent the estimation was good but not excellent because there is a very big gap of 2.4 centimeter that is uh, length First, you need to estimate, you have to measure, and then you have to evaluate. And then that is how you have to do it. So we have to move back to our book, our booklet on page 24. On page 24, we have to move to mass. Um, mass the amount of matter that takes up an object. In short, we say how heavy 
is your school bag, how heavy is um, the bag of sand, and so on and so on. The estimate, you can take one loaf of bread and estimate the mass by feeling how heavy it is, and then you can record that in the um, table there. Take one, when it comes to measure, this is measuring when you are doing it as a, to get the actual answer. You can take still the loaf of bread and you have to place it on the scale and take the recording or the, the readings. You can also um, do that. The difference or how to evaluate, you must find the difference, the biggest value minus the smallest value. And then you can rate your work and also do the, the comments. Time, we have to continue with time. It uh, tells us about the past, the present, and the future. For example, how long will it take to complete a 100 meter race? To estimate that, you need to make a smart guess. And then to measure that, you have to use your stopwatch. And the instrument that we use to measure um, time, we use a um, cl uh, clock or the watch. There are two types, there is digital clock and analog. In the evaluation, you have to do the same. Temperature is the measure of how cold or hot something is. For example, your body temperature or the boiling the temperature of boiling water in the estimate question could be what could probably be my body temperature um, you can use a thermometer a thermometer is an instrument that we use to measure the temperature and is recorded in degrees celsius and the evaluation you have to find the difference you rate your estimate and also also write your comments. Let us go back to the chalkboard and do mass, time, and also temperature. While I'm doing, while we are doing mass, temperature requires time, so we need to boil water. So allow me to do some lighting here. I need a fire. Um, I have a stand with um, um, spirit. It's just alcohol which is helping me to have fire to boil some water. Here I'm having water which is um, just from the tap. It is um, not that cold, it's not that warm. And then I'll wait until this water boils. We've got a scale here and um, we'll be measuring mass using the scale. We say the instrument for measuring mass is, um, you can use a balance or a scale. We have um, a clock here. Um, I mean, for time, it can help us to measure time. So, to start with mass, I would like to do it on your table. Um, it should be exactly at zero there. And that is the zero. Um, it will move a little bit. Yeah. So that is at zero. 
So you're going to help me to measure the how heavy will this uh, macaroni be? But first, remember, we need to do the estimate. We have to measure, and then we have to evaluate our work. So in order to give a better guess, I need you to feel, I need you to feel this, um, to just feel it. But I'll be the one to give my estimation. And after that, then we have to measure it there so that we see the difference. I hope the fire is on. So that we see how, um, what will be the difference. By lifting this, I could feel maybe it will be probably um, maybe 550 um, grams, somewhere there. Maybe 550 grams, because when I felt it, I could see that it's heavy. But we have to measure it, so I want you to take it out and um, place it on top of the, the, I hope it will not fall, it's fine. Okay, if you look at the reading here, it goes straight to 500. If I have to round it off, it has to go to, it's pointing at 500 grams. If it's pointing at 500 grams, I just want us also to confirm because the company that is doing this, they also indicate the, how heavy this is, the mass of this, and they indicate it here. And you can see that even through the measurement, it gives us the correct amount and it helps us also um, it helps the household the people not to complain that one is having more and the other one is having less. So with that, we go back to our work, which is The estimate I gave is 550 grams and the measurement is 500 grams. We need to find the difference in order, in order to evaluate our work. We take the biggest amount, which is 550. We subtract um, 500. We'll get a zero, we'll get a five, we'll get nothing. And this is grams, grams, grams. So the difference here is 50 when it comes to, because these are hundreds. So if you look at this gap, it's very small. On our scale, 550 and 500, 500 they are a little bit near each other. So if I have to rate my one, two, three, four, five. If I have to rate my work here, I will say 550 is close to 500. So I'll give myself a four and I'll say, remember five is excellent and here is poor. So I'll say, when it comes to evaluating my work, I'll say my estimate was very good because 550 
is close to 500. So the prediction which I have done makes sense and it's a good prediction. And that is mass. We also have um, a scale here, which you can also use to measure the, um, the mass. But in this, for you to make use of, you can just hold. But it must be on something which is fixed. But this is just a demonstration that we have to, in order to measure this, you know, it has to hang and it cannot, it doesn't have a whole way it can hang. You can put it in a plastic. The mass of a plastic is very low and it cannot. And then you hang it there. And then um, when you take the measurement, of course, you have to be, your eyes have to be straight, straight, straight with the weight end. And it points for me at 500 there. But you have to, as I said, you have to hold this um, it have to hang on a fixed, fixed, fixed object. So the scale is still giving us 500 grams. So that means it was um, done before packed. So that is uh, about uh, mass. We have to look at, uh, we have to go to time. Time is to measure, to measure how long you could, you took to finish a certain work. This one I'll give it to you to just give me any guess. Now we are going to measure this, this pen again. We did it already. So, you need to guess maybe how many seconds will it take us to finish measuring this pen? You can take any guess. Maybe, maybe one second. I think two. Two, okay. Your guess is two seconds. Two seconds. You are going to do it, and you give me the, 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 the you give me the number, the the answer. So you have a pen, you have a ruler there. I will be keeping time. I will be keeping time. As you start, my stopwatch will also start. On the three count. When I say when I go until three, you start. And then when you give me the answer, that's when I stop. We start one, two, three. Fourteen point five. And I stopped. And the time which is here is three seconds. Three seconds. To find the difference is three minus two. Then the difference is one second. Meaning two seconds are near three seconds. That means your estimate is at four, which is also very good estimation. Your estimation is good because two seconds are so close to three seconds. And the comment is a good guess and the rating it should be four. When is it zero? For example, if you could guess one, one hour, it would take you one hour to measure the length of a pen. 
Then if you take, if you measure it and you find it three seconds and you gave your prediction as one hour, then that will be poor. That will be a poor estimation. When is it excellent? When it becomes three. When your estimation is three. I can hear the sound of water is about to start boiling. And that is about time. So back at home, learners can do those activity using um, all the means you have. You can uh, temperature, you can take a temperature at any shop or mall. They are taking temperature with the um, electronic um, thermometer, the one which is looking like a gun. You can record that temperature. Mass, you can do it at school with your teacher. Time, you can do it at home. And um, in length, you can also do it at home. Now we need to move to temperature whereby we have to use the instrument used is a, a thermometer. This is a thermometer. So what is here is alcohol, mercury. So it's, it has to move up there. And uh, this goes until, it can measure until 100 degrees Celsius or 110 degrees Celsius. We need to find out um, the temperature of boiling water. So our water is about to boil, but with that, why don't we measure the temperature of water, which is just from the tap. The temperature inside this room is um, 15 degrees Celsius. Is a is there at 15 degrees Celsius for for this? Um, so it's 15 um, degrees Celsius in this uh, class, and then we have um, to take the normal water. We need to find out. So what you can, you can even do it here. We can do it here. Do you want to do it? You have to hold on this uh, black um, um, holding here thing. And then the bulb, the bulb must be completely in the water because it's the sensitive part. So it must be in the water, but it must not touch the bottom of the um, beaker or the whatever we have to use. So you can just insert the down a little bit again. It's fine. It's fine. It can it can still move. Okay, just there. Just there. Just there. Okay, just Go up a bit. I can see that the temperature of water is 14. It moved down to 14 degrees Celsius. And that is the temperature of water that we took from the tap. But we have to do our experiment on the water. I can see that the water is uh, about to start. And um, we need to give the estimate first. Um, do you want to make, to give an estimate or should I give? Of boiling water. What could be the temperature of um, boiling water? Maybe, can we say maybe 70 degrees Celsius? Mm. Or maybe? I think 80. 80, okay. So, let us uh, estimate as 80 
um, degree Celsius. So that is our estimation. So we have to measure now. So how I'm going to do it? I'm going to do it because it's uh, fire involved here. So I have to insert it completely in the water. And then you can see the, the alcohol is moving up. And then boiling water goes until Okay, take the reading. It's moving, it's moving. The time you take, you can just come close. We are told, um, we are no, told. Okay. Not, so it's moving still. So it's moving still. Now the water is boiling now. So, 95. 95. So, let me just, let me just um, off the fire. So, it was 95 degree Celsius. That is the water which is the temperature of water which is boiling and for us to find the difference we have to take 95 95 minus 80 we have a 5 we have a 1 the difference is um, 15 degrees celsius so if you look at 80 and look at 95 it is not that far from each other. So I'll still say the estimate, I'll still rate myself at four and say it's still good, very good. So my estimate is good because it's near 95. But but um, in our science language or proven thesis, we say water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. So this is fixed. Why we did not get 100 here, maybe the water, this water, might not be pure. Maybe the water is having some sort of chemicals, for example. Why? Because maybe the time, the time that we're supposed to record, maybe that was not the complete time of water boiling. So those could be the reason. But even if you are to round off, Obviously, you get a hundred. If you are to round off ninety-five degrees Celsius, you still get a hundred degrees. So, water boils at hundred degrees Celsius. We have different um, types of thermometers we are using. We have um, the one which is um, now used at at many shops and schools called the uh, digital thermometer. We have these ones which you can use to measure the substance, temperature of a substance. You have another one you can use at the hospital where you have to put it under the armpit. So there are different thermometers that we use and those things are called the instruments. With that, I believe you should be able to do the activities and um, we need to move to page we can now go to page uh, 24 on our booklet to explain the activity Okay, on page 24, the activity, it's, 
in the table form, um, you need to measure and estimate the length of a pen. That's the first one. Mass of your school bag. It must have books. It must have books inside. Um, time. Um, time it took water to boil and the temperature of a melting ice. Estimation, you must give the estimation before you measure. Don't change the estimation after your measurement. Um, measurements should be recorded also with a unit. The estimation must also have a unit. You must indicate the instrument that you have used, length, what instrument did you use to measure the length of a pen? Did you use a measuring tape? I don't know if it's so, you have to write it there. The difference is to subtract the biggest value minus the smallest value. And the evaluation, you must rate yourself. You just need to circle the number from one to five. We have done that depending on, the, on your estimation. The comment is for you to answer the question, how close was your estimation to the actual answer? So that is what you have to do in all the um, four measures, length, mass, time, and temperature. Um, with that, we have come to the end of this um, lesson, but before we leave, we must remember to sanitize always. Make sure you sanitize all parts of your hands are sanitized. We keep the social distance by stretching out and front and um, put on a mask all the time. Stay safe and from us, it's a bye-bye. Hug your friends anymore, but you can still give yourself some love. Or you can practice how to blow hugs. Mwah, 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 mwah. And until next time, bye! Thank you so much, Teacher Dumi, for that very informative lesson. And thank you, Grade Sevens, for your undivided attention. Now, that lesson, I can say, definitely measured up to my expectations. But that is all the fun that we had in store for you today. So that concludes our lessons. But before we go, we always like to show you some some content from the regions and today we are in the Ohangwena region where we spoke to Miss Imbangu. So she has some information to share with us and after that we'll also be um, hearing from the teachers about their experience with uh, the production of these booklets. So that's it from me. So until next time, bye! Um, I'm Tipalina Imbangu from Otunganga Circuit Office, Ohangwena region. As a resource teacher. Um, thank you for keeping us posted, receiving the, the booklets. Um, I would like to give my views on the booklets. Uh, first of all, the language used in the booklets. Um, I remember the first week when we received this booklet, um, we received 
book, booklets written in Afrikaans and English, which is a challenge to our, uh, our learners. However, thank you that you are improving. So far, we are receiving Oshkwanyama and English booklets. <music>